Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Carlick with Flying and Eating. Today, let's go somewhere and do something. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hi, it's Adam here. Welcome to today's adventure. Uh, today, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be flying down to Dallas, Texas, and I will be meeting up with the evil Rob Thanos, who is also flying in from, in this case, New York. Well, Newark, New Jersey, specifically. Uh, and when we get there, our plan is to do, you know, normal things that we would do, which is cruise around and check out video game stores and go find a really good steak somewhere. So if you want to know why you should use clear right now, that is the normal security line. My line will take, oh, and it goes well into there. My line's gonna take four seconds. Okay, so I cleared security over there, which is still chaos for even people who have TSA pre-check, but I did it in like 10 seconds. I'm telling you guys, I wish Clear would give me money, but they don't, but seriously, their service is really that good. So like the Atlanta video I did, where that was the primary hub of uh, Delta, this is actually the primary hub of American Airlines. And you can really tell that when you're around, because there's American Airlines aircraft everywhere. United, which is what I stick to if I can, uh, has very small presence here, but they do are operational here. So as always, you know, hometown team from Chicago, of course, I stick with them. So this is the gate I came out of, and the evil Rob Thanos is actually flying JetBlue, and since they really only have like a couple of gates each, I thought maybe he would come out here. So I went ahead and I asked, I was like, oh yeah, you know, he's coming in from LaGuardia, blah, blah. and they're like, we don't fly to LaGuardia from here. And I was like, uh, <laughs> and then I like gave him a flight number, like, oh, yeah, no, we do, never mind. Uh, it's gonna be on the other side of the airport. This is why you stick, you don't, you don't fly JetBlue if you don't have to, don't fly JetBlue. So I made it to E24B, only to be reminded of why I should never fly anything other than United, because this is an American section of the terminal, despite what the JetBlue employee told me. And of course Rob just messaged me, he's like, yeah, I'm clear on the other side of the airport at gate B7. So thanks a lot JetBlue, not only did you not know you operated out of this airport, you sent me to the wrong damn terminal. So we left the E section, now we have to take what's called the Skylink over to the uh, B section. It's kind of funny, I have not been in this airport since I was like 10 years old. It used to be a common thing because this is a huge American Airlines hub, as is uh, O'Hare. So when I was a kid, we would fly on this a lot. But uh, now, I've, I just haven't had a reason to come back here. Please do not block the doors. There we go. As you can see, there's a, a ring that actually runs all the way around the airport. We must head to B7. That's apparently where he really is. Thanks a lot, JetBlue. We should be seeing the evil Rob Thanos any second now. Oh, there he is. We are finally free from Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. Uh, we had to go rent a car, which there was a little bit of an incident there. What's going on with that, Rob? So, um, apparently rental cars are more valuable than black gold Texas tea in, uh, in Dallas right now. So uh, I re make a reservation for a rental car at the airport, as you do, and then I get an email yesterday saying that, oh, we appreciate your reservation, but we're going to cancel it and move you to a rental place 30 minutes away. So we had to take an Uber to get our car. Yeah, it was uh, quite the adventure, and the guy was like, you just going out to rent a car? Like, it's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> when you rented the car, we're like, can we return it to the airport? No, oh, that sucks. You had to come from the airport, but no. No. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, budget. Regardless, we are now officially on the road. We are, where are we going? We're going to uh, a Cajun restaurant. Which I kind of question, because we're not in New Orleans, but this is more his trip than mine. You can get you can get good Cajun, like, like Texas, New Orleans, Florida, Mississippi. I know, it's within the zone. It's just strange. It's, it's a zone. little like, hey, we're going to Boston for New York-style pizza. It's like... It's in the range, but it's wrong. But we'll see. It's better than Mexican food here. Yeah, don't, that, don't do Mexican food. That is actually true. 
Um, Mexican food, you do that in like San Antonio, uh, maybe Houston, maybe Houston Austin, bit. definitely. Yeah. Barbecue, those Austin's thing. But uh, Texas, like, or Dallas specifically, steak. Yep. Which will happen. We'll oh, be doing that. Steak, oh. steak will oh. happen. Well, but that's the thing in Dallas is like the steak. So if you're like, oh, I'm in Texas. I've been, never been to Texas and I'm in Dallas. I'll, I'll have Mexican food. Here's what. Not. Not in this city. Got our menu all set up, admittedly. Looks pretty solid. I like how they designate uh, that. Um, but also, we're gonna go for this. Crispy fried gator tail as an appetizer. He was going on about it. I don't usually do that, but gator is good stuff. Yeah, no, it's good stuff. And that last time, we were out at cow patties or whatever. Cow patties. Yeah, we couldn't there, get it. I was there yesterday, and they didn't have it again. And I asked them, like, what's the deal? And they said, because, like, there was a storm that, like, that destroyed the gator farm that they got their supply from, so. Well, hopefully. Hopefully that didn't affect this place. And the other thing I'm going for, because it's my standard, if you ever eat Cajun, this is my standard. Get a Cajun etouffee specifically with crawfish. Ooh, I grew up eating that stuff. It is amazing. Granted, different everywhere you go. That's how it's supposed to be. A good Cajun place is always different than any other but Cajun place. Is what I, what yeah, I judge a Cajun right. Place. Exactly. That is my gold standard for whether or not a good Cajun place is good or is not good. Okay, what do you got here? A beta amber famous New Orleans brewery. It's kind of hard to find north of the Mason-Dixon sometimes. So Now obviously I don't drink so I never really cover this stuff so if you guys are, you guys do like the alcohols, this is good. let alcohol. me know because I, I do occasionally have the friends on who can talk about this stuff. So now describe I'm, this. So it's an amber lager. Um, perfect for fall actually. Um, not too light, not too dark. Really good with seafood, uh, fried food. Appetizers have landed. So what'd you get here? Chargrilled oysters. There you go. And the gator bites. Oh, yeah. I got the gator bites as well. This is more food than I was expecting. Plus our actual meal's not yeah, here yet. Alright, he's taking one. There you go. It's like Cajun escargot. It's like the snail and the oyster is just the delivery mechanism for the garlic and butter. He's, he's consistent. He did actually say that in Montreal about escargot. So far, so good. Now, it comes with cocktail sauce, which I'm not a huge fan of cocktail sauce, to be totally honest. Usually, it comes with what? Remoulade. Yeah, that didn't happen this time. They gave us ketchup, which I'm using for the fries, but I'm going to use it with this sometimes. Why not? Mix it up. Although, he looked at me and called me a sick bastard, which he probably is right to some extent. So, if you've never had an alligator in general, the way I would describe it, maybe he'll agree or disagree. I would say it's kind of a tangy rubbery beef or pork it's very similar to a pork and that sounds like a bad way to put it like rubbery but it's actually quite good i put it it's like literally the halfway point between like beef and seafood it's light like okay. seafood yeah i could say that yeah which makes sense because it's like a land thing that also lives in the water so it's right like yeah no i could see that i i would probably argue a little bit more in favor of pork at least like the way pork is presented in like say a chinese fried rice or something yeah the entree has arrived there is my crawfish etouffee with dirty rice he got it with standard white rice which usually i do but i don't usually have the option to have the dirty rice so i thought i would opt for it first impressions pretty solid so I find it interesting. This is like the Texas Cajun influence is that they've added garlic, uh, garlic bread Texas toast to uh, all their meals. They had it with the oysters and with the etouffee. It's interesting. I've never had that at a Cajun yep. restaurant before. This is pretty good stuff. Now, I'm not like him. He keeps stuff separate. I mix everything together. I want every bite to be the same. So as you can see, I crushed mine. He's about to finish his. We both added a little table salt. Now, there was nothing wrong with it. We both just, are, we just like our salts. Yep. But... Um, I will say that I like lemon on stuff, and I, that's not very traditional with Cajun stuff, but... Yeah. No, for the boils, you get, like, the bag of Cajun yeah, food. Yeah, like so it, there were lemons on that plate with the... Um, oysters. Oysters. If I had... I, I wasn't thinking. I should have taken those off. I would have used them in this, but that's just a me thing. But, um, yeah, overall, I, I would say it's solid. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised you could find better ones in New Orleans, of course, but... But I'd say solid, like, 7 8 out of Yeah, man. especially considering that, again, Dallas is not known for, like, anything other than steak, really. This store has, like, a lot of Hot Wheels and cars that are based on movies and stuff. There's actually a lot of really cool ones in there. Yeah, Ghostbusters, Ecto-1. Oddly, the only one I haven't really noticed. I mean, we've got some obscure stuff, like the Japanese Spider-Man car. Yet, no Time Machine DeLorean. <laughs> 
I gotta give a shout out here to Dave. Do you guys remember in my Atlanta video? He found this exact Coca-Cola bottle in the museum and wanted to buy it, but of course it's in a museum, so he couldn't. We randomly found just one bottle, $8, but this is from the 96 Olympics. So shout out to Dave, man. I found it for you. I just can't do anything about it because I can't bring it back. Crisis averted. We found the time machine DeLorean. Everything's fine with the world. Rob, I think we found something that you need to own. <laughs> there you go. This is our car. This is a bunch of birds not giving a crap that they are crapping on our car. So we just left Half Price Books. Uh, the car was covered in birds and we were trying desperately not to have the birds poop like, all over the uh, car, which I got hiccups because it was so funny because they did, so I'm sorry. We got a couple of video games, it was fun. He's a teacher, so we actually got a discount, and that was nice. 10% off. Big shout out to Half Price Books. I'll show you the video games on the video <laughs> game channel, but it, uh, adventure! And now, we're gonna go meet up with Steak! We're gonna go meet up with my buddy Brett Weiss, and we're gonna go get a authentic Dallas-style steak. It's gonna be fantastic. <laughs> We're going to this place near, um, I'm sorry, by the way, if that bothers people. Uh, we're going to go to this place called Y.O. Steakhouse. And I guess it's near Daly Plaza, uh, famously where JFK was assassinated. So right here, uh, near Daly Plaza, which is over there, we'll be there in a minute. This is the JFK Memorial. If I recall correctly, this was actually designed, or at least authorized, by uh, the late Jackie Onassis. And, of course, it's just... You know about John F. Kennedy and everything, but uh, yeah. So it's a little difficult at the moment because there's some sort of protest or something going on. Anyway, we're gonna cross here, right here. This X, that's actually where JFK was shot. Was that spot? And they used to have these little markers in the street, like these three specific points that indicated something. Uh, I think it was the three shots, but uh, they seem to have gotten rid of those. But uh, yeah, there's that. Um, the infamous grassy knoll is right there. That's where all the people were hanging out. The book depository is this building right here where Oswald uh, was shooting from up there on the sixth floor, which is currently a museum actually. It's a pretty nice museum. Granted, we won't be going to it on this particular trip. So we've crossed the street, and you can see there's multiple, there's like X's over there. And there's one there, that's actually where he was ultimately killed. I'm sorry that I said it was over there, that's just where he was shot first. That's where the kill shot was, unfortunately. Right here, this is where Abraham Zapruder stood when he filmed that infamous footage. And at the time, these trees weren't as big, but you can tell because when he turns, you can see that that sign is in the footage. And that eventually leads us over to what is known now as the Grassy Knoll, which is this area right here. So there's that fencing, which we'll look around. There's the train yards, all this sort of stuff. If you've ever studied the history of the JFK assassination, like this is all just kind of a fascinating area. It's, it's, it really is like just standing in a, a moment in time because this area hasn't changed much. Um, but right here, if you subscribe to the Grassy Knoll second shooter thing, it would be right here. And you can see that X, presumably, right as that truck drove over it. Like, that's the spot where supposedly a second shooter would have hit him. I don't personally subscribe to that, but, you know, then, yeah, this is that whole infamous area. And this is, this is one of those places where if you go, if you know, if you follow your history at all, this is just one of those places that just, it feels significant because it really is. We're joined by our buddy Brett, who's Hello. hanging out with us. You guys know him from YouTube, you should. If you don't, you should. Go find Brett. Brett. Yeah. on YouTube. Yeah, go check him out and support his books. Um, but we also got, look at that. I got a porterhouse steak. You got a porterhouse. What'd you get? I got a little sad baby sirloin, but it's going to be awesome anyway. Not he, quite, a, quite up to par with you guys. He's being a responsible adult, which we are not. <laughs> we also got collard greens. You can tell who wanted that's that. Finished. Whatever. That's my point. That's how little I know about vegetables. Right. Uh, and of course, I was like, yeah, mac and cheese. Gouda mac and cheese. So I've cut up my steak. I got it medium rare. This is some sort of fancy butter. They said it was like a marble. Bone marrow. I know it sounds gross, but it's, it's going to be good. But uh, I got a medium rare. Rob Thanos over here got his, like, basically rare. I think he was just saying if the cow was still alive, he'd just go for it. <laughs> Rob just said it best. This, this steak basically melts in your mouth. This is incredible. Amazing. This uh, is really, really good. Before you judge me, this is just bone. There's nothing I could eat here. Now, 
I'm going to eat this mac and cheese. This is Gouda mac and cheese. I have not tried this yet. I'm the only one. Your quick thoughts on it? Freaking awesome. Some of the best mac and cheese I've ever had by a mile. Yeah. Second. And yeah, they were right. That was absolutely fantastic. I don't know what that is. I'm not eating that. Spinach. <laughs> but um, No, no, no. It's fine. How was your, your wine? Because you, you have to talk about the alcohol because I never drank uh, it. Okay, so I started the night off with a Lagavulin 16, which is a wonderful peated single malt scotch whiskey. Um, absolutely delicious. Tastes like a campfire in your mouth. Perfect for a steak. You, you guys, you didn't see me it. wince. I just you, winced, but okay. Just like, I guess dude. that's all right. Um, and then uh, now I'm drinking a Malbec, which is like a slightly spiced uh, red wine from Argentina, uh, which once again goes really well with the steak. Um, it was wonderful. Like, great whiskey list, great wine list. My coffee was black. The dessert menu has come out. I'm looking at this, the Y.O. bread pudding, because it's specifically named after this place. I'm not getting a, a New York-style cheesecake here. That doesn't make any sense. But dessert has arrived. Unfortunately, the ice cream fell off. The guy offered to bring a new one, but we're like, dude, we're really not that fancy. You might have brought two. I think this is pretty amazing. Excellent bread pudding. It's the perfect mix of sort of light and fluffy and moist. Excellent. Bread pudding is definitely a southern thing. I don't know if it's a super Texas thing, but there are definitely a lot of restaurants in Texas that have good bread pudding. This was absolutely amazing, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I should have mentioned that we shared some. I tried to share it with this piece of crap, but he's like, no, I didn't give me a drink my booze. I'm hung over from the meat. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever, I mean, this is definitely Texas, Texas meat, because like, God, <laughs> like, I'm so like full. House, yeah, I'm so full. Yeah, and you've never been here before, but you're the local. The beer was small for Texas. In Texas, when you ask for a big beer, you want a big beer? But the food was incredible, the steak was great, the dessert was great, the sides were amazing. And decent atmosphere, you know, but good place. Two thumbs up. Staff was definitely really cool. Staff yeah. was very cool. Yeah. This is this is a good place. I, I would recommend. It's a little expensive, but we knew that going in. So we are uh, heading over to Brett's car, which we are on Novitsky Way, which happens to be, no surprise, not surprisingly, after Dirk named Novitsky. After Dirk. Yeah, named after Dirk. And there's the American Airlines Center. Yeah. Or arena? Uh, center. Center. So the uh, American Airlines Arena is in Miami. American Airlines Center is here in Dallas. This is where the Dallas, Dallas Mavericks, not surprisingly, play. And the this, Dallas Stars. Yeah, the Dallas Stars. And uh, this is one of the greatest sites in American history because this is where the 2011 Miami Heat lost <laughs> and justice was served. So we're heading back. This is the school book depository again. That's where sixth floor. JFK assassination, unfortunately, happened from up there. And here it is, Daily Plaza. The protesters are gone. We're going to drive right over that X, right there, and right there. And now we go into the tunnel where the uh, presidential limousine just sped away. There you go. You guys just saw it from that perspective. Day two of our uh, journey here. Uh, we're about to go. We're going to. What we're doing is we're getting some video games and looking around for stuff. But we're also about to continue our little food adventure. So for breakfast today, what we've decided is. Lunch. I've never lunch, whatever food consumption, this consumption of mass quantities. Thanks, coneheads. Um, for that, uh, I want I want to try. I've never had it before. Is Whataburger, which is a very it's a fast food place down in Texas. I've seen it a million times. I've just never gone because I've always gone to like something else. Because um, that's the thing with Texas is there's well yeah they have that, but they've also got like a million other better things. But this time it's time to have Whataburger. However, he doesn't want to do that. What do you want to do? I think we should have like a little taste test uh, comparison and uh, go to Whataburger and go to In-N-Out Burger. Now you guys saw my feelings on In-N-Out Burger if you watched my video of venturing to San Fran uh, Sacramento with uh, Jesse. Um, not that it's bad, it's just not anything special. But again, you probably say the same thing for Whataburger. So yeah. essentially, but they actually do have In-N-Out in Texas. So right there, the number two, the double meat Whataburger was what was recommended to me. And I was also told not to get it with onions. Apparently it has a White Castle effect, let's put it that way. It is time. I've got my Whataburger onion rings and my burger here, which is nice and cold. And, <laughs> and he's got his double, double, doubles. <laughs> double, double, doubles. First impressions, there's pickles, which are terrible. You shouldn't have pickles, it's the devil's cucumbers. The meat itself is not bad. It tastes kind of unique. I don't know exactly how to describe it. Um, Almost like a really compressed brisket or something. It's not bad. It's nothing special. It's okay. But, um, yeah, it's not bad. What do you think? What's going on here? So, as I've discussed with you, if you're talking East Coast versus West Coast burgers, Shake Shack versus In-N-Out, objectively, in all measures, 
Shake Shack is better. Better ingredients, bigger burgers, better fries, whole nine yards. But because I do not live anywhere near in in and out and I haven't had one since pandemic, I crave this. So the onion rings are actually pretty good. Um, they have a nice sweetness to them. I like them. The burger wasn't bad. The, the patty part was the best part. I can only describe it as a really compressed brisket. That's a really, it was very salty in a good way. Um, I would actually say that In-N-Out probably does every other aspect of the burger itself better, except for the burger patty. Like if you combined them, it'd probably be something really special. Yeah. Maybe will, not special, but different. I will say that your side's probably better. If, if, In-N-Out fries are terrible. Yeah, if they're notable. For, like you need them animal style. Yeah, but, which oh, you didn't I, do. Yeah, I don't like soggy French fries. So fair enough. So we made it, Babe's Chicken. This is where we're going. I gotta admit, this place, Sweetie Pies, Ribeyes, looks pretty, pretty cool too. This might just be scenery. I don't really know. But Babe's Chicken, man, everybody was telling me like you gotta go here. It's like crazy ridiculous. So, Rob, you excited? I am excited for chicken. We're at Babe's Chicken, yeah. which is some of the best fried chicken ever. And I hear their chicken fried steak is great too, but I've never actually had it. But since the out-of-towners are here, and I've been here a million times, I thought I would try it today, so we'll see. Multiple people have told me today to get this chicken fried steak, so that's exactly what I committed to. Unlimited sides, which the is The sides kind of here insane. are incredible. The green beans are like no other green beans. It's the very best corn you've ever had in your entire life. And this includes Toby Keith's cream corn. Toby Keith's, yeah, weird chain. They're not going to have good food. Their cream corn is incredible. The corn here is even better. The mashed potatoes are off the charts. Amazing. And we got our sodas, which are craft sodas, apparently. There you go. So there's, their salad here is supernatural. It's lettuce and dressing. But Thank it's, you. It's lettuce and dressing, literally. Nothing else, but it's great. See, I got a craft cream soda. I don't usually get sodas, but so the root this gentleman sold me on it. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> it's me. This is a very good cream soda. And your craft Coca-Cola, I think? Real sugar. Real sugar, cola, solid stuff. What'd you get? Excellent craft root beer. And so one thing about root beer, never get barks. It tastes like dog crap. Uh, this is very good. Look at this. We got a traditional biscuit. I've been told good things. Much excited. Our pile of meat has arrived. It's uh, country fried steaks. We got fried chicken. Mashed potatoes, corn, I'm not even sure, the green beans, it's good, vegetable things. Anyway, we let's dive in, everybody. This is fantastic. This is really, really good. I, I just, a gross oversimplification, but it's really, really good. This might be the best country fried uh, steak I've ever had. Finish the, finish the steak, now it's time for the fried chicken. The evil Rob Thanos was cool enough to let me have some of this. I gave him some of my steak, though. What did you think of the steak? I wish I'd taken more if you took a leg. <laughs> well, sir, you want most of this back? How did you already finish that? Because I was eating. Okay. <laughs> I finished my chicken. There it is, still more over there. I'm going to say it. For those who watched the previous videos, I think this actually defeats Mary Max Tea Room for the best fried chicken I've ever had. It's in Atlanta, Georgia. That place was incredible, and for years that was my go-to. <laughs> I'm gonna say that I think we have a new champion. Excellent. Um, so <laughs> this place now takes the the title for best country fried steak ever, and I, I'm I'm still sitting on it, but I think it wins best fried chicken. I got to go into the sides now. I haven't even started that, but like. Sides are off the charts. I, I can already tell you, you know, Babe's Chicken in, in Dallas area. Definitely a highly recommended. So I've already had one helping of each. The potatoes are good. This corn, he wasn't kidding. This is ridiculous corn. The potatoes are good. I don't know if I said anything special about them. They're good though. But the corn, legit. Very legitimate corn. That place, I, I gotta give it props, has the best country fried steak I've ever had. Uh, now granted, my, my palate for that has always been kind of limited to like Denny's or something. Like it's not, I, I expect, you know. But the fried chicken is actually what legit stunned me because you guys know I was on Team Mary Max in Atlanta, Georgia, and I still think that place is phenomenal and I want you to go there at some point. But maybe. Like, I'm still sitting on it, but I think maybe that as, a, as the new crown champion of it, which was really unexpected. Um, and yeah, the corn was surprisingly amazing. It was mostly just butter, but it was awesome. Moral of the story, just go south for your fried chicken. Don't. Just don't. Yeah, it's almost like they have a history with it. The journey is coming to an end. 
I am now back at DFW. I'm about to go check in for my flight and uh, head home. But I have a lot of time to kill because my flight's not till 2.30 and it's about 6 in the morning. Uh, I mostly did this because then I had a free ride over to the airport. But I have a plan. Ah, like any civilized airport, they have clear. So even though there's not much of a wait, I have every intention of making good use of it. So I got through security, no real problems. It was, the line was kind of long. After, after the clear section, it just kind of came to a halt. Uh, I'm not gonna say that all of DFW does this this way, but it was very strange. It was like, all right, on this, on this half of the side before security, this is all the pre-check pre people, this is all the not pre-check people. And as soon as you go past the actual security, they flip it. So then it's like, not pre-check and pre-check. Creates a lot of confusion and congestion for no real reason. So right there, United Club, that's my plan. Um, I have a free United Club pass that's gonna expire in about a week. And so I can't think of a better way to use it than just sitting there all day until about 2.30. So for a good like eight hours or whatever it is, <laughs> I'm gonna be sitting in there just chilling. And so there you go. Once you're inside, there's drinks and food and all sorts of things. And now I'm just going to relax. Here's our breakfast options for right now. We got some breakfast sandwiches, and bagels, eggs, fruit, coffee, cereals, lots of good stuff. Right here shall be my base camp for the next few hours. I decided to get the bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit, as well as a, what I believe is a Danish, and of course a black coffee. So this is kind of an interesting uh, United Lounge because obviously uh, Dallas is not a hub for United. So most of the hubs, like they're constantly packed with just people in them. But uh, United has a very small presence at Dallas-Fort Worth. They only have a couple of gates. So basically this whole place fills up with like everybody who's for that particular flight. <laughs> and then as soon as the flight is getting ready to leave, this place just absolutely clears out. So just kind of an interesting look at it right now. Because essentially there's only a couple people on the other side. And then there's like myself. And I'm going to be here all day. But <laughs> I'm going to make the most of it and use and get a lot of coffee. <laughs> I decided to reload a bit, got another one of those, but they also had an avocado toast deal going on. So I've been here long enough that it's time for some lunch. We got corn dogs, it looks like, we got veggie chips and things like that, quinoa salad, pasta salad, we have brownies and things. Decided to go with the salad, the corn dogs, got a little ketchup obviously, and the chocolate chip cupcake. We'll see if anything else comes of this, because I'm still here for quite a few more hours. These are much better than they have any right to be. Look, there's a cream center inside the muffin, or the cupcake, in addition to the cream top, and then that little bit of candy. Terrible for you, obviously, but hey man, quite good. So I was in there for like eight hours, I don't know, but it was amazing, I, I quite enjoyed the lounges. Anyway, now it's actually time to board my flight. And with that, the trip to Dallas is over. I am now going to head home and probably get a little bit of sleep. Uh, so thank you very much everybody for watching. I wanna thank everybody who was involved in that trip, particularly Rob, the evil Rob Thanos, as well as my buddy Brett, Brett Weiss. You should check them both out on their social media stuff. But of course, check out mine. All that stuff's in the description. Uh, and uh, you know, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, all that sort of thing. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all later.